Power Apps name formulas versus using variables in OnStart. So name formulas, if you haven't seen them before, this is this idea that we can create a object very much like a variable and say, hey, here's its value. But instead of us controlling it, us setting us, us being able to determine when or not that gets calculated, we're going to hand all that job to Power Apps. We're going to say, hey, Power Apps, I need this thing. You worry about when it gets calculated. You maintain it for me. And so we're going to talk about really the difference of using that, right? It has a little bit of a different syntax. So you have to understand how that goes. So we're going to talk about how to use it with tables and lookups and filters and numbers and things. Like just talk about kind of the nuances of it because it is a different syntax than we've seen before. And then we're going to kind of compare it to using it on start and make sure you understand the pros and cons because it's not like one replaces the other. In reality, we want to start using these in conjunction with each other to make our app the best it can be. Sound fun? Now let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so over here on my desktop, we've got an adorable picture of a Bernie Doodle sitting on an airplane using Wi-Fi because somebody typed that out there on the internet and I just went and made it with Dolly. So anyway, that's all I've done. I added a little picture, I added some words. So the way the name formulas work, right, to get started with them, what you want to do is you click on app up here. And so the same way that we have on start, where a lot of us like to set variables today, to be honest, right, I'm, I'm a big proponent of it, I do it all the time. We also have formulas. So formulas is where you set up a named formula. All you have to do to use one of these is you kind of just go up here and use it, right? So you're going to say something like NF, right? So instead of, because they're not actually variables, we'll talk about that in a minute, I've made up this new naming where I put NF in front of all of them so I know where they came from. NF user, and then you're going to say equals user like this, right? So that's just the regular user function we've always done. And one of the nuances here, well, there's another one, but one of them, right, is that we're going to do this semicolon. So keep that in mind, like, until I put that semicolon there, notice the little red line, I realize it's hard to see, but it's there. So you've got to put the semicolon after these. So that is a little bit different. Also, like think about this. Normally you would have said like set NF user comma user function, right? Like the syntax is different with these named formulas. It is more of a traditional sense, right? But what's really neat about this is so by putting this up here, what we've said is, hey, Power Apps, I need to be able to use NF user, and if I use it, I need it to be that user function's output. But just keep in mind that like I don't want to be able to control it, right? So let's just create ourselves a new screen. And so if you go down here and you throw a label in and you do NF user, it is a record, so you have to do a dot and then dot full name, and obviously it's me, okay? So you're like, all right, I, I, what's the big deal, right? But think about this. You can't change it, right? So if we were to went back over here, let's go back here for a second, and let's go into on start, which is where you usually do this, right? You would have said set bar user to the user function like so. Close your parentheses. You don't even need a semicolon, right? You're done. We need to make on start run, so we'll say run on start. So if we go over here and then do a label, and then we say var user, and then we do a dot and full name, we're going to get the same thing, right? Because var user and nf user output the same thing, they're both set to the same value. The difference is that if we go here and set a button, and say you wanted to set the uh, the var user to be blank, right? Well, we could do that, right? We could say set var user, and then we'll just do the blank function. And if we press this, boop, Shane Young is gone, right? What happens here though, if we insert another button, what if we take this button and we try to say something like NF user equals blank, right? You can't do that. If you hover, it's going to tell you incompatible type because it wants a record and you're giving it a blank. Well, what if I give it a record? Then it's going to yell at me about that. Like it can't compare. So it's not doing a good job here because what it's doing here is it's trying to say, right, where do we usually use this? NF user, right, where do we usually use user signs, right? If we go here and throw a label in our app, normally what we do is we would say, does two plus two equal four, right? That's how we do comparisons. So right here, it thinks I'm trying to do a comparison, but you weren't, you were trying to change that NF user. You can't change NF user. It is immutable, to use a fancy word, right? Anything that you put in this formulas, you're washing your hands out, you're saying, hey, Power apps, take the wheel, you're in charge. It is not me. So we cannot change these. So when you're thinking about, should I use formulas? Should I put something up there that I might want to change later? No, right? You can't change it later. Whereas when I do something on start, 
then I can absolutely change it later. Okay, so that's one of the big differences. Speaking of it being an on start versus formula though, because you're like, well, I just always use on start. So one of the challenges of on start is that everything in on start has to process before your app loads, right? So it delays the opening of your app because Power Apps says, oh, on start, I gotta do every one of these things and there might be 100 things there. I've had 100 things there before. All of that has to be done and finished before I can start rendering the app. Things in formulas do not, right? So Power Apps is going to do that when it needs to. So if you think about opening up this app and I land on this lovely screen of the Bernie Doodle, right? Does it need that uh, NF user here? No, it doesn't. So since that doesn't need to be done, it's not going to process that function right now, right? So like if you put things in formulas that never end up needing to be used, I keep clicking on the wrong spot, but click here. Like if it never needs to be used, it's never gonna get calculated. And I mean, don't put extra stuff there in reality, but if you do, it's okay because it doesn't add any performance overhead. But then the way this would work, as soon as I switched over here to screen two, now I'd say, oh, I gotta do an FA user. And then it would have compiled it right then and be like, oh, boom, there you go, slid it right in, okay? Whereas if you think about, in our case, once again, oh, I see I keep going the wrong thing. When I click on the app, on start, so it had to create var user before the app could even open, even though it didn't need it on this home screen. So it stopped the home screen from loading, even though it didn't need to be there. And you know it's going to be in there, it's gonna be carried around in memory the whole time. So var, u var user is a much more expensive thing. Now, don't get me wrong, there are still a lot of scenarios where we're going to need to do on start and set variables. Like, because if we do it in formulas, we can't change it. But like, if you think about like our deep linking example, where we send a record over, right? We do the whole parameters and we put them var user or we do var record based on the parameter that got passed, right? We do that lookup, we do it on start because in that scenario, we need on start to be processed and done because we need var record to determine whether to drop the user on the home screen or to drop them on the deep linked screen, right? So there are a lot of places you're gonna do on start. But anytime that you are putting things in on start that are just a cache, right? Like how many times have you, you know, in my, my performance talks, I'll do things like, you know, collect, I'll do clear collect, and then I'll do coal uh, departments, and then I'll feed it in the SharePoint departments list because I know that that list isn't going to change the whole time the app's running. And so that's one of the ways that I cache that, okay? So this is always in my on start. This does not belong here, right? So we would cut this out of here. Now, when we switch to formulas though, we can't just paste that in, right? So we hit enter. So that's not how you would do that here, okay? So in this scenario, what you need to do is you're going to say NF departments, right? And you could call it whatever you want, but we're currently using NF. So that way we remember like where they're coming from, right? NF for name formulas. You do what you want to do, but that is the pattern that uh, Daniel and I decided on today. And so we do NF departments, then we'd say equals, and then just your data source, and then put that semicolon at the end. I can't tell you how many times I forgot to do that when I was first getting started. And now in my app, I've got NF departments, but it's not getting loaded right now, right? But if we go over here, still not loaded. We insert ourselves gallery, still not loaded. Oh my goodness, drag my gallery over here. And now if we change the items to be NF departments, boop. Look, there's a little bit of delay because then right that second, it went and fetched that list, put it into the collection or the table variable, if you will, and then made it there, okay? But same thing, I can't edit NF departments, so I wouldn't wanna do this for a data source I was reading and writing to, but in this case, I'm just caching that data source anyway, so we are in business. All right, so that's really right, the, the primary lesson here. Now, what I wanna do is take a minute now and just talk to you about some of the other, like some, set some different data types up here. And so what we're gonna do is I'm just going to paste in a cheat sheet that I made earlier of like all the ones I wanna talk about and we'll talk through them. So one sec. All right, so we paste this in. Okay, so here are just some different ones I just wanna kind of run through, right? So we've already seen the NF user that's loading the record in there. NF departments, we just did that, was our table. So NF choices. So if you're trying to make a yes, no, maybe for a dropdown, you want to have that. Like sometimes we'll do that for like locations or statuses or just things where we know we wanna use that in the same dropdown over and over again, but it doesn't have a list. So remember, this syntax just makes a table, right? And so that makes a single column table, so NF choices would be that. Now, one thing I don't like about formulas is notice when I highlight this, that doesn't tell me that that's a record, it doesn't tell me what it would look like, whereas we know everywhere else that we do that, you're gonna have to, you know, uh, or you'll be able to see that. So what you might wanna do in this case is like, instead of writing this here and seeing if it works, 
I probably would have, if I was less comfortable, throw myself a drop down on the screen and then I would have went here and I would have said, okay, if I set your items property to that, do I get what I want? Yes, no, maybe I do. And so then now I would feel comfortable pasting that in here. So just keep that in mind that this interface doesn't do a good job of helping you visualize things. So if you're troubleshooting, troubleshooting outside this interface and then pasting it in here will be the way to go. You know, here I set a color. So we're seeing people, if you're one of those ones that like to create your own themes and you know, you're gonna declare a bunch of colors in your on start again, once again, don't do that on start, go put those colors here. And so then the same thing, right? Like, so if I take this button and I set its fill to be um, enough color, right? It'll just work, obviously. And then if at some point in the future, I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of medium aquamarine. I don't know why Shane uses that all the time. We want to switch to coral, cornflower blue. And then I would just change this and it would take care of it for me, right? You, you get the idea. Remember, you can also go further, like so NF executives here, I am filtering one of my data sources, right, where the department equals executives, no big deal. I can even use name formulas inside of here, right? So notice that NF executive count is count rows NF executives. And so basically Power Apps is smart enough to figure out that it needed to do this one before it did this one, right? So it was able to do it. And, you know, sometimes you run into that problem, like in concurrent on, on start, you can't have two referencing things. Now, remember, if you're going to have these two reference each other, though, they cannot create a loop. So you can't have one equal the other and the other equal that, right? That would just create a, a loop. So be smart about it. But scenarios like this where I want to get all the executives and then filter that down. Um, on office hours today, one of the people was asking about um, they were trying to collect votes that people had made, right? And so for that person, right, we would have said, hey, go into formulas and then in your formulas do uh, just collect all the votes that this person's previously done, put that into a table um, thing created via the formulas, and then she could reuse that for all the voting activity she was going to do downstream, okay? So, and speaking of my training, right, if you haven't signed up, go to training.powerapps911.com. I've got, you know, on-demand classes, I got live classes, I got a six-month university program, we can get you a mentor assigned. We can help you with the projects, right? We've got a lot of services. So please go check out all the offerings that Power Apps 911 has. I would appreciate that. Okay, back to my list of stuff. So here you can see also if you were trying to create a collection by hand, right? So this would be a syntax a lot of you don't use, but you'd use the table function and then you'd put the records in here, right? This would be the equivalent, right? If I wanted to, right, this would have been the same as, if we go to on start, let's just show you what that would look like. If you you would have said uh, clear collect, that's ah, not how you spell clear collect, clear collect, and then you would have said coal things, and then you would have said um, paste it in that and that. And so that's how you would have written this on start. And so just keep in mind that you're not going to use a collect over in formulas. You're going to use a table function. It's going to give you the same output, right? This is generating a table. And when we go and look um, in formulas here, this is also generating a table. So those two things would create the same output. But when you use formulas, the syntax is different. And then finally, like this is just one of those examples I like to show off, right? But like you can even get into a complicated, right? This is using sequence and adding columns to find the next 10 days, no big deal. And then all of these would just work, right? So we just go down here and be like, hey, you know, NF next 10 days. And then look, it starts showing you that value column. We would just change that over here to my date. And then there's the next 10 dates, right? So all of these things are very possible. You just, you have to kind of sometimes slow down a little bit and just think about, right? Like, because you're gonna have over here the name of the thing and then an equal sign and then something that outputs what you want. So you're not using sets and collects, you're using table functions and values, but you can use filters and lookups and do math, sequence and add columns, right? Because at this point, right, what is this output? What is this function output? It makes a table, right? Once again, this interface doesn't tell you, but that makes a table. This just wants a table, that puts that table into there, okay? So formulas, very interesting feature. They're going to help improve performance. It's a feature that Microsoft is very gung-ho on. You know, they've invested here because they understand that this is going to open up more doors and reduce the number of scenarios where you need to use on start, 
which on start is that whole blocking, right? Slowing down the loading of your apps. And people are like, power apps are slow. It's because you got too much code and on start sometimes. Or go watch my performance video, right? I got a bunch of performance tips there. But you get the idea. We want to be smart about it. And so Microsoft continues to do things like this. And then reminder again, right? When you set these, you can't change these in your app. You can't reuse these names in your app. So don't put things here that you want to be able to modify on the fly. You just want to put things here that will um, update. Now, speaking of that, though, I will add the last little caveat. Like, it is smart enough, though. So, like, we did NF Executives, which is Filter Employee Department Executives, right? If I, somewhere else in my app, patch employees, then the onus is on Power Apps to know that employees have changed and then recalculate executives. So, let's go try that, right? So, like, if we go here, I haven't tried this one. We're going to try it together. But if we go here... And so if we throw a vertical gallery and we say, hey, show us um, NF executives, right? We should see our four executives, right? So boom, there's our four executive. Now that we see them, I want to try and do a, a test here, right? So we're going to say insert a button and we're going to patch employees, right? So we're going to patch the SharePoint list directly. And we're going to do defaults employees, so create ourselves a new employee. And then we're going to set the title, because they all have to have a title. So title equals, hi, mom. And then the department equals executive. Like so, close that, close that, boom. So if we press the patch button, look. Notice that it was smart enough, right? See the fifth executive down here? So what happened here was we just patched employees. That's it, right? But our named formulas, they said, uh-oh, employees have changed. Let me refresh employees. Let me recalculate this. Okay, now I know the new NF executives, and there's five of them now, and so it showed all five, right? So that's the magic of formula or named formulas is all of that happened for you. You didn't think about any of it. It just works. Okay, last little caveat of these things. If you look over here under uh, variables, notice that, you know, right, we have var user, we don't have any of those, we don't have any of those. So they don't show up here, right? Like, I think if I had my druthers, there would be another one here that said formulas and they would show up in this list, but they're not going to show up here. Um, you know, if you search for them, so if we search for NF user, that will absolutely still work, but it doesn't list it as a variable. It just does it in the formula. So we will be smart about that. That's why I like this NF in front of it because I know that everything with an NF in front of it now on my app, because that's never used anywhere else in Power Apps, everything there is going to be a named formula. All right, that's enough for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this, right? Like not the deepest thing, but this is skills you need to put in there. And it hopefully just stops you from stubbing your toe, right? With a bunch of the lessons learned that me and the team have kind of had to share here. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. I always read those and try to reply to as many as I can. Uh, not all of them, but as many as I can. And if we can do anything for you over here at Power Apps 91, just reach out. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.